In this lesson, we're going to examine the innervation of the kidneys by the autonomic nervous system and talk briefly about its influence on kidney function. The autonomic nervous system is divided into the parasympathetic and sympathetic pathways. Now, autonomic innervation of the kidneys is limited to the sympathetic nervous system, and because the sympathetic nervous system is complex, we'll limit our discussion to the sympathetic pathways that innervate the kidneys. The sympathetic fibers that innervate the kidney are divided into the preganglionic fibers, which are represented by the solid green lines, and the postganglionic fibers, which are represented by the dashed blue lines. The preganglionic fibers that innervate the kidneys exit the spinal column at the 10th, 11th, and 12th thoracic and the 1st and 2nd lumbar spinal nerve tracts. These preganglionic fibers then pass through the sympathetic trunk without making a synapse and converge into the celiac ganglion, where they form synapses with the postganglionic fibers which innervate the renal arteries and ureters. In addition, these postganglionic fibers innervate the smooth muscle cells of the afferent and efferent arterioles, the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule, and the granular cells of the juxtaglomerular apparatus, or JGA. Furthermore, these fibers release catecholamines, which promote vasoconstriction of the renal artery, as well as the afferent and efferent arterioles, which will decrease renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. This type of sympathetic activity will have the net effect of conserving blood pressure by reducing the filtered load. Sympathetic input to the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule augments the reabsorption of sodium ions along this nephron segment, which has the net effect of maintaining blood pressure through the retention of body water. Sympathetic input to the granular cells of the juxtaglomerular apparatus will increase renin secretion from these cells. Renin plays an important role in blood pressure regulation through angiotensin II dependent vasoconstriction and aldosterone dependent sodium reabsorption along the collecting duct, both of which help maintain blood pressure. Renal innervation also includes a few myelinated afferent or sensory fibers, which conduct activity from baroreceptors and chemoreceptors. For example, increased perfusion pressure activates renal baroreceptors located in the interlobular arteries and afferent arterioles, while hypoxia or renal ischemia and abnormal ion composition of the interstitial fluid stimulate chemoreceptors located in the renal pelvis. These pelvic chemoreceptors are thought to respond to high extracellular potassium and hydrogen ions, which may alter capillary blood flow. These sensory or afferent fibers exit the kidney and form synapses along the T12, L1, and L2 spinal nerve tracts. Let's conclude this lesson with the following question. Is the sympathetic innervation of the kidneys necessary for renal function? Well, since transplanted kidneys are not innervated and they function well enough, it suggests that sympathetic innervation is not necessary for renal function. However, it does not suggest that the sympathetic innervation cannot play an important role in renal function, since overactivation of the sympathetic pathway is thought to contribute towards hypertension. 